Hello, uh, I am John Dykes. I'm an illustrator and artist, and uh, we have this workshop here that we're uh, offering. Um, and I'm going to go through the process of uh, creating a large painting such as this um, with um, mixed media um, uh, collage and acrylic on board, um, and uh, mixing traditional and digital media to to get there. Um, so uh, the process uh, to to get to a final like that uh, starts with uh, the same way my illustration projects and other paintings start, uh, and that is with um, sketches and ideas. Um, and so we'll move over to the sketch. I work in sketchbooks um, and um, we'll use the sketchbooks to uh, keep track of uh, ideas um, and thoughts and, uh, and people and Zoom meeting characters and um, anything and everything. Um, uh, from life drawing to uh, um, to conceptual ideas, um, and uh, I, I just love working um, uh, in sketchbooks and and uh, developing ideas this way. Um, and I've been doing this since uh, since high school, so I've got. Um, as you can see on the top shelf, uh, that's not all of them, but there are um, roughly one or two books a year for uh, 30 years, so uh, it's, it's a lot of them. More than, you, more than you'd care to look at, I think. Uh, so from, from the initial um, uh, ideas that, uh, that I will get, I'll work up sketches um, and then um, move to a, a larger um, uh, drawing paper uh, and continue the process of, of uh, working on sketches and ideas. In this case, these are uh, um, illustration assignments, but uh, again, the process is, uh, is, um, is pretty much the same of, of uh, visualizing an internal idea. Uh, and sometimes it goes the other way around where it's, it's uh, uh, a drawing that starts off that um, uh, is placed next to another drawing that has no connection, but visually they do. And so that can spark um, uh, a, an interesting idea. Um, I'll also keep track of uh, inspirational material. So I've got stacks of, of these sort of things, um, things that I'll print out um, that I just find interesting that I think could make um, a good basis for a painting. Um, I just pause to say that the recent series of paintings that I've been working on um, have mostly to do with uh, um, packaging and pop culture from the 1960s, mid-century, um, and the advertising mindset that goes along with it. Um, I guess uh, growing up in that time, um, I was affected by uh, um, what I had seen uh, on TV and on signage, and, and um, uh, so, so it speaks to me, I guess. Um, so I'll, I'll collect um, uh, imagery. Uh, I'll take my own photographs of things that I find interesting, uh, characters or, or interesting architecture. Um, and then I'll also um, uh, scour the worldwide internets for um, interesting retro um, designs, uh, signage, um, packaging, and this sort of thing. Things that do spark my eye that, that I, I'll pull them together and print them out on sheets so that I have them uh, to work on. Um, and then from there, I'll, I'll mix and match and, and um, uh, put things together and, and see where they go. Okay. All this stuff, all this stuff is interesting to me. These little um, uh, dingbats and doodads from uh, from the mid-century feel. Charts of vegetables. You never know what's going to be interesting. Um, and even contemporary catalogs. Uh, use these for for color ideas. Um, you know, there, there are designers and and, and uh, artists working on contemporary color uh, that can provide a great launching point for 
uh, color schemes and, and, and um, color palettes. So I love going through uh, contemporary um, uh, magazines. No, I don't work for Frontgate, but I like it. Uh, the other thing I'll do is uh, uh, collect postcards, um, as well as my own photographs. Contemporary illustrators work. So anything and everything, I, I, I try to take pride in, in um, trying to get as varied a, uh, a reference base or illustration base, um, reference base as I can. Um, because I think that can add to uh, an interesting, um, uh, interesting outcome if, if you can't really draw the line back to one influence or one artist. Um, even Velvet Elvis cards will do the trick. As well as other artists, Joseph Albers, Ideas for Color. Again, these have you know, influenced other paintings that I've had, so kind of piggybacking on the masters and, and uh, uh, getting color concepts can, can really help start um, the process. Because um, things like color schemes can hold you up if you don't if you're not sure where to go um usually happens because you don't know where you're starting from it, it helps to have some sort of starting point and then uh, um, move from there so i guess that's uh i guess that's part one okay so moving from the sketch stage to the adding some digital um what i do is uh, uh i take some initial drawings um and uh and, and sketches and, and open them up in Photoshop um, and um, start to compose them uh, to see how it might look. Um, so this is um, uh, actually um, a, a mixture of, uh, of a, a printout of a matchbook cover um, that I, um, I got online and um, uh, increased in size and printed out um, and glued down. And I, so I got to start, uh, I, I kind of go back and forth. So I got to start by gluing that down onto the surface. Um, but I was unsure of how to get the Felix in there. Um, so I used Photoshop to try different options. Um, and the original one was just the, the black uh, like this, but I thought I could do something, something maybe more interesting. Actually, this is the first, uh, first before any, any, uh, um, and then um, uh, this is the actual start of the painting. You can see the floor here. So this is um, uh, collage on a uh, wood panel. And this is uh, acrylic. Um, and I opted for a non-traditional color palette but because it, it just, to me, it, sounded, it seemed more interesting than the traditional um, black and white Felix of Cat. Uh, and that started with playing around in Photoshop changing the color and going all over the place and then something comes up and say oh that that's a little more interesting than than the uh, normal um, so i'll use photoshop and then what i'll do is um, um, uh, compose these um, this is a little further along um, but i might um, uh, say for example going back to this original uh, one print this out and use this as a guide um, so i'll get it set up in Photoshop, print it out, and then um, start uh, using that as a guide to, uh, to continue with the painting. And we can um, check out the painting section. So uh, just to show part of the process of working with Photoshop, uh, I opened up a, a different uh, um, file uh, of a rough that I'm, uh, I've started to show um, in terms of the workshop. Um, and um, um, again, this started off as some reason, 60s kind of packaging that I've been attracted to and I wanted to paint that large. Um, but I didn't, I want to do something other than just the packaging. And so somehow um, dancing figures came, came to mind. Um, so again, this is reference I find online. So generally I have the idea, well, I'll do the, the chiclets gum with dancing figures. Um, I don't know exactly where the dancing figures will end up being, um, but I'm starting off with um, the 
uh, triplets. And what I do is I place this on a file that's the exact same proportion as my um, canvas, uh, which is 34, 36 by 48, something like that, 36 by 48 inches. Um, and I want to figure out where I want this in, 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 the, in um, relation to um, uh, the composition. Um, and so I'll start with, um, with the background of the, uh, of the uh, triplets, and then I'll, once I get to a further stage, I'll add in the, uh, uh, the figures. But I'll then go back and forth with Photoshop and manipulate and, and, and um, try different positionings. Um, and so um, there we go. Um, and we can move to um, the next stage, which would be um, transferring my basic drawing go back a bit, um, which is the, uh, the essential drawing shape of the product. Um, in the interest to save time, I will trace over the basic shapes um, and project those onto my canvas. Um, a lot of people say that's uh, cheating, you can't use a projector, but uh, I'm into cheating. Um, uh, I'd rather save time in this stage um, getting proportions right, especially logos and things like that, um, where you want them to be exact. Um, once the basics are down, then when I'm putting the paint down, I can have liberty to um, uh, push and pull and, and, and move. But for essentials, I want to have um, uh, this just right. So um, I'll take this and I'll put it in a projector and we'll see uh, how that goes. Um, in order to take a smaller drawing, such as this, and transfer it to a uh, larger canvas, um, I use the projector. And these projectors come in different shapes and sizes, but um, again, we could draw a grid on the canvas and draw these things out, um, and that's that's one option. Um, but this is uh, is much faster, um, and I've got to do this when the um, after dark because there's too much light in here right now. But essentially, um, I lay the canvas right under the uh, projector, turn the projector on, and the light um, projects the image onto the uh, surface and I uh, get the focus just right with this and get the uh, uh, get it exactly right. And then I pencil it in with, uh, with colored pencils or, or chalk or pencil, whatever. So from the uh, transferred image, um, I move to blocking in the colors. Um, and again, um, I'm looking to um, get to a point where um, the, uh, the painting will be layered and most likely uh, there will be collage elements on there. Um, so the idea is to block in the colors. Um, the initial colors don't matter as much uh, because 90% um, of the time they'll be covered over and covered again. Um, so um, the object at this point for me is to block in the colors essentially as, as quickly as I can. Um, so I'll be pretty open with the, um, my uh, mixture of color. I don't want to be too, I don't need to be too exact. Um, I'll come up with some, some god awful mixture of yellow. Um, later on in the process, I will, um, for example, um, be more specific with the colors. So once I've got the basics in, I'll want to match certain colors. So I'll um, use these um, uh, Pantone books um, that have color collections and really get to just the color that I want. Um, this is for the final or top coats. Um, and then, you know, put, put little chits down there or little sections um, so that I have that as a guide as I'm mixing color. Um, and I'll do that in these yogurt containers or whatever, because if you're painting over a large 
area, you want to be sure you don't run out of paint um, because if you need to go in for a second coat uh, or a touch up with the same color, um, it's a lot easier having the paint um, already mixed and ready to roll rather than trying to mix it again and, and match it. Um, and some of my reference here, so we're just kind of hope actually is to, um, even though the top color will, uh, will vary, um, the hope is that some of this um, underlying color will peek through in certain areas on the final. So um, I'm just going to quickly show how uh, I use um, uh, collage, or I do a collage process. Um, again, getting back to uh, the piece we were looking at before. Some of these pieces are um, uh, photographs of, of Dean Martin that I had uh, gotten online, and then um, put a dot pattern um, with Photoshop, um, and then print it out in sections, um, and then cut up. So I have these sections of just regular copy paper um, printed out, um, as well as some of these little um, little things here, uh, which are just printouts that I, I do right here. Um, and the next stage is to get those glued to the surface. Um, so what I've got here is another painting that I started, um, and I have no idea where this is going, but I want to uh, use this to show. Um, I'll start off with a uh, birch panel, um, and um, uh, I'm just going to glue some of these down and show you. Uh, this particular technique works really well uh, because um, when it's done right, um, it, 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 um, it glues the, um, uh, the details to a board, uh, which I can just show you right here really quickly. Uh, it glues them down very, very flat and Permanent, and this is a great surface to then paint over. Um, so this is just started with, uh, I don't know again where this is going, but I'll go over uh, this with, uh, um, with, with paint. And, and the technique of this collage uh, is such that it, uh, um, it stays nice and flat um, and you can paint over it without, without too much problem. I tried all sorts of variations with spray mount and Mod Podge and, and all this stuff. And, it doesn't, they don't seem to work for me because uh, then uh, if you pour the acrylic resin over it, it bubbles up and causes all, all sorts of uh, unhappiness. Um, so here I'll just put um, these basically in position um, and then uh, use this um, uh, gloss medium and varnish um, and put down too much of it, obviously. goes down and I don't think I got it high enough. You gotta make sure the whole area is covered. If you have areas that are not, then it'll tend to bubble up. And we don't want any bubbling up. Um, and while I'm at it, I think I'll just get the top in here. Careful of my own rules here. It's all got to be covered. And then you can even go right over it with the uh, brush and more or less. Um, and as you can see, it's starting to uh, starting to act up here, bubble up. But if we use a, a burnisher. guys. Okay, so um, now I'm going to show the process of, um, of putting acrylic resin over a uh, completed painting. Um, so what we're going to do is um, use this painting, which is acrylic on wood, uh, and we're going to coat it with, uh, with acrylic resin. Um, so the process is so you have to um, 
it's mainly preparation beforehand. You want to have everything all set and ready uh, so that by the time you're mixing the, um, uh, the acrylic resin, um, you're ready to go. You have everything all set up and, and ready to go. So I'm going to coat this table with newspaper and put some plastic down and we'll catch up with you. Um, the um, resin will go over the edge and we'll need a, a brush or a spatula to kind of clear it up over here. If we have it sitting right on the table then it will work. It's going to be raised. I've got it uh, set on those cups as you can see. And then it's got to be level. If it's too high on one end then the resin will, will go off. Um, and I did a little prep here so it's uh, very close, so it should be fine. So we're going to mix the resin and the hardener, resin and the hardener. Um, and I've already um, calculated how much of this I need. Um, the company that sells this has an online calculator. Um, if you go to artresin.com and you put in the size, so you go to the calculator and you go to the size. Um, for the uh, painting that you're covering. Uh, so in this case, it's 48 by 34 or something like that. Um, it'll tell you how much uh, of this you need. Um, and we will do that. Um, so this is the resin. Let me double check with that. amounts. Um, normally I wear this hideous mask for, for safety. Uh, I think doing one of these without uh, is, is going to be okay, but uh, um, I think generally this stuff is pretty safe, but, but uh, just want to make sure. Okay. Tongue compressor. Dirty work, but somebody's got to do it. All right. A good five minutes. So um, maybe we'll come back live to Boston when uh, when it's all mixed and ready. So I mixed the resin for a good full five minutes, um, and we are ready to roll. I have um, my spatula, which usually is clean, and, um, and one of these um, uh, cheap brushes. Uh, and I will go ahead and do more, but before I do that, let me just uh, quickly, now for the fun part, here goes nothing. Enter to the edges. And I'll just leave a little bit extra in the bucket if at the end um, there's some sort of glitch and we need to drip uh, a little bit additional on there. So it should be good. All right, so from here. There's some uh, imperfections in the wood. I'm kind of, and there's screws on the top here. Um, and so I'm making sure that the resin gets in into those nooks and crannies. And then there's also, uh, you have to watch out for imperfections like things, pieces of dust, right? Or an eyelash or something. Oops. Uh, the last part of doing the resin 
Um, it is going over the surface with a heat gun uh, because the process of mixing the resin thoroughly um, puts some air bubbles in there. And if you think you might have seen with a close up, you can see some of the air bubbles. Um, so this is a uh, essentially heat gun that will go ahead. I'll pop all the bubbles. And then I'll go around with, with a little flashlight even and just look really closely, kind of go over every square inch, make sure there's no uh, um, bubbles or uh, dust. And then once it's all, all set, then um, it's best to uh, either put a plastic cover over. Uh, I didn't do that in this case, but I built supports and drape a plastic cover over. Um, or um, close up the doors um, and stay out of here. Uh, keep, keep some windows open a little bit, maybe a fan very lightly going, but you don't want to um, raise dust because that'll uh, you'll come the next morning and then uh, you'll see a bunch of, bunch of uh, imperfections in the surface you don't want that. Well, that's the story. After applying the resin, I decided to put a plastic tent over it. This helps keep the fumes down, but probably more importantly, it keeps any dust and specks and things like that off of the surface. We'll take a closer look. So after about 24 hours, it's all pretty much dry and ready for hanging.